Hey teachers! When creating and using drag and drop activities in Google Slides, have you ever encountered a problem where students are changing the draggers? And what I mean by that is maybe they're trying to change the words or the numbers on a dragger so that way they can get the right answer or just because they think it's funny. Well, in this video, I am going to show you how to create draggers for your Google Slides drag and drop activities that students cannot edit. They'll only be able to move and drag and drop these draggers from now on. I like to use drag and drop activities for my digital math centers. I have digital math centers for almost every upper elementary math standard, which you can find linked down in the description of this video. And a lot of the activities in these math centers incorporate drag and drop activities. So students may be dragging and dropping information into different categories or dragging and dropping the total or the difference or whatever the answer is, or using drag and drop for things like showing area and perimeter. Now, when I started creating these drag and drop activities, I knew that I wanted to make them so that students could not change the draggers because I've had that happen in the past with other drag and drop activities and it can be somewhat annoying when that happens. So I came up with an easy way to create these draggers that students cannot change. Now let's go ahead and jump on my computer and I'll show you exactly how I do it. All right, so as you can see here, here are two examples of digital math centers that I've created, and I already have the backgrounds done on these, so you can see when I click and drag, nothing on this moves. Now, just so that you know, for this video, we are just going to focus on how to create your draggers that students cannot edit. If you want to know how to create the backgrounds and upload them so that students cannot move those, we have another video about drag and drop activities for Google Slides here on the channel, and I'm gonna link that down in the description. So I recommend that as soon as you finish watching this one, go check that video out and you'll learn how you can create backgrounds and upload them so that students cannot move them. All right, so you can see this is ready. We just need to create and upload the draggers. So to do that, we're actually going to work in PowerPoint. That's what I find to be the easiest. So I have a PowerPoint presentation here, and all I want to do is click insert and add a text box, and I am going to add basically what each of those draggers are going to be. So the first one is going to be four tenths. And remember, you can change the size, the fonts, all of those things if you want. And then after I get the first one made, I'll just click Control C for copy and then Control V for paste it. And I will make my next one, which is going to be two tenths. And I'm just going to repeat that until each of the draggers are made. So we're gonna speed this up a little bit while I finish making these. All right, so I've got these made and now I just wanna give you a few quick tips. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to click on all of these at the same time and remember that any excess space that you have on the other side of your words or numbers, that is going to come through in your draggers as well. So I'm gonna make these a little bit smaller. And then the other thing that I like to do with my draggers is I like to put an outline, a black outline around them and I even make it a little bit thicker just so that it's clear to students what they're moving and dragging. Now that I have these made, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to right click on each of these and I'm gonna click save picture. Usually what I'll do is I'll just create a folder on my computer and I will save each of these as a picture. I strongly recommend that when you're saving them, save them as a PNG. PNGs will convert best for your draggers. So I'm quickly going to go through right now and I'm going to save each of these on my computer as PNGs. 
All right, so I've just saved all of my draggers to the computer. Now I'm going to move over to the Google Slides presentation and I'm going to click on the insert image icon and I'm going to click upload from computer. I'm going to find all of those images and I am going to upload them into the presentation. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so you can see I've just moved all of these in here. And one thing that I want to show you that happens is if you click on this, there's a lot of excess space around the dragger. I have found that a lot of times this has to do with what font you're using. So if this is the case, because sometimes it can make it harder for your students to move, just double click the dragger and basically these little things will allow you to crop it. So then you can bring it in so that it is all right next to the dragger and you don't have all that excess space around it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that very quickly. For the other ones, we'll speed this up real quick. Okay, I've removed all the excess space. Now the next thing you'll notice is these are too big for the spaces that they're going to go, so I need to make them a little bit smaller. And the best way to do this to ensure that they're all the same size is just to highlight everything at once like I've just done. And you can see that I can resize them all at once and this will ensure that they're all the same size. So I need to shrink it down just a little bit more and that is just about right. So after I've done that, you'll see that over here, when I was making this background, which once again, it's linked down in the description if you wanna know how to make a background, but I created this word bank. And so now I'm just gonna drag all of these over here to the bank and students can just move those over. Now the last thing that I want to note before we wrap up this video is you will see that mine do not have a background to them since I am just dragging and dropping them onto solid surfaces. I didn't feel like I needed a background but you may be working on a type of presentation where a background is needed because there's a lot going on behind it. So if you wanna do that, when you are in your PowerPoint presentation, just click on your dragger, click on shape fill and select white. You can select gray, whatever color you want it to be. And then when you're in Google Slides, it will have that solid background. So that's just another quick tip for you. We have lots of videos here on this channel all about using Google Apps in the classroom. You'll find things like creating digital notebooks for Google Slides, creating virtual escape rooms in Google Forms, and creating digital mystery pictures in Google Sheets. If you are not already, make sure that you subscribe to this channel so that you never miss any of these videos when they are released. So until next time, happy teaching.